Hi. Welcome to another episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome back to the weekly news and chat show from the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. Welcome. I do feel welcomed. You are welcomed. You are always welcome. You know this. Yeah. How's life, Nick? Not bad. Yeah. yeah. I want to address something first. Oh, okay. Sounds you... serious. <laughs> this is really not. <laughs> do you remember a few months ago and I was making my way over here and I said, I saw a gothic man. Yes. In like a cape and a top hat, like almost like I would expect Dracula to be wearing. Yeah, I do remember that. Through the streets of Whitby or wherever <laughs> he landed. Well, I saw him again on the way over. Tonight? Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking, what if? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is he real? Are you, are you the only person seeing this person? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what if he's, what if I'm, I'm in a, it's a time slip. Oh, maybe. And he's just like gadding around in his own little universe, and occasionally he just he's so in his own little in universe, and out. he doesn't even notice that he's come forward in through. Time. I mean, maybe no, I don't know anybody else who's ever seen him. It's probably just like a steampunk dude, but no, I think it's a guy. I think it's a twentieth, nineteenth century vampire. I, I think it is. It might be a Victorian just slipping in and out. <laughs> Maybe that's possible. Maybe. Maybe watch too many of these sorts of movies. <laughs> Maybe. There is also that. But that makes for a better explanation. I, I agree. I think that's a good explanation. I like the sound of it. And you are the only person I know that's ever seen this man. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you live around here. You should I've never seen him. I don't think he's real. I think, you, <laughs> I think you're hallucinating vampires. I don't know that he's a vampire. No, I think he is. I've not got up close to him. In my head, he's a full-on vampire. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's distinctly possible but that's two sightings now mm. and you only when you're coming here well yeah you know you don't see him at any other time when i'm in this area yeah well no but strange i suppose it's a you know similar time every week i suppose yeah he only goes out on thursday <laughs> nights it's the, it's a bit darker now, it is getting isn't a it? bit darker so i oh, know i've never seen him in broad daylight but that, that well, you wouldn't he's yeah, a vampire exactly. yeah checks out it does check out that's interesting wow. <laughs> local vampires victorian time slip next time you see it see if we can get him on the show it'd be really interesting okay. to talk to him <laughs> just pull over i'll just try and what i'll do is i'll just try and like tackle him <laughs> if i just go through him then you'll know it's very proven but if you don't go through him and he's an actual vampire you I might, might get in prison you might get eaten <laughs> or okay or blood sucked <laughs> you don't want your blood blood sucked no no okay i'll ponder on this some more uh, how have you been? I'm all right. I've been away. I've been had a few days by the sea. It's been lovely. Oh, good. Went to visit the North Norfolk coast. Oh, lovely. Yes, it's very nice. Nice part of the world. Lovely part of the world. Um, I went for a walk in Sandringham. Yeah. Lovely part of the world. It's like lovely the king, f- king owns that. King it? owns it. He goes there for Christmas. Yeah. It's his Christmas abode. Um, where, where his dad ran over some public. Yeah, his, da- yeah, his dad ran over somebody many, many Completely whiles ago. ago. Um, and I've been eaten alive by something. Oh, I've man. got more bites on me than I've ever had before. Royal midges. Royal midges. <laughs> Bastard things. So I'm sorry if I'm itching all the way can through. Can you this, just like. They, they hurt like fuck. <laughs> it's, it's just fine. Is it like a park that you can just. Yeah, it's like. A, it's on his grounds and you can just like. Yeah, you can pull up into the grounds and just yeah. walk through the forests or the woods or whatever they are. Okay. There's a visitor centre and there's a cafe and a shop. Okay. And then you can pay to go in the main house bit. Right. And where the church is and that sort of stuff. So where they, they go, well, some a lot of the family went there to go there for Christmas. Yeah, that's where they spend most of their Christmas. I think that's pretty much the only time they go there now. Yeah. Because they used to holiday there as well, but now they go to, tend to go to Balmoral for that. Right. But yeah, it really hurts. <laughs> My legs are so itchy. All four of us got the same as well. Really? It's crazy. Nice. So it was either that or bed bugs. They oh. just appeared in all four beds okay. in one night. <laughs> I think the, the midges are probably there. Yeah, more than likely. But other than that, it was a really good time. Good. It was really hot, really sunny, except when it wasn't and it was really rainy. But uh, most of the time, it was sunny. Well, I, I know we always we well recently we've talked we have touched on weather quite a bit, but what what is the weather? I don't know. Like four days ago, it was nearly forty degrees. Yeah. Now it's thirty not. degrees. It was, and now it's like we've lost basically half of that temperature. Yeah. I don't know. It's In going crazy all over the world as yeah. well. There's all sorts of crazy shit going. Don't on. tell me global warming is not real. Climate change, isn't it? Yeah. 
absolute madness. But I only got back madness. earlier. So uh, I got back earlier today. I yeah. watched the film for this week's episode earlier today, and now we're recording. Brilliant. Fresh in your mind. Fresh. It's going to be the quickest I've ever watched a film to doing the episode on it. It's within the hour. It's going to be formulating your thoughts live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I still don't really know what I thought about it. I'm going to ponder over it as we do the That's news. Allowed. Perfectly allowed. <laughs> Good. Um, what do we do next? Uh, we usually do a question of the week, then we'll do the news. We haven't got a real talk this week because, as I said, I've been away, so I've got a game. Good. And, yeah, that will do. We'll get out of it. I've got a question. Shall I do the question? You do the question. I've got, I've got a question. Apparently you've got one for me. I think I have. Right. <laughs> yes, I remember. So, if you had to be perpetually surrounded by one aroma, oh, beside your natural human smell, <laughs> uh, and... You and everyone around you could smell it at all times. <laughs> what would it be? Interesting. Now, there's a couple of things here for me. You could have, regardless of how nice the aroma is. Yeah. If people could just smell it all the time, <laughs> it does go. Will it go? It'd be like foul. Eventually. There's that guy who smells of cooked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like. But you know what I mean? Like a yeah. rotisserie chicken. You smell that, especially when you're hungry. It smells delicious. Oh, that's really, that smells nice. But I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd want to sit next to you at work all day. All if the that time. Was the smell. That is interesting. That's a good question. I, mean, I need to ponder for a second. I'll, 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 I'll suggest a couple I was thinking of. Go on. I really like the smell of garlic. Yeah? Going back to vampires. But I don't know if I want to smell of garlic all the time. <laughs> that's true. Be garlic boy. My, when, we went, uh, when we were away last week, my mum brought a... Garlic king prawn pizza yeah. with courgette and dill. Okay. And it was the most garlicky thing I've ever smelled in my life. <laughs> it, it absolutely reeked. There was no cheese or tomato on it. It was just yeah. garlic butter, prawns maybe, and courgette. Maybe I go with wild garlic because it's a bit Wild more... garlic's a nice smell. It's a yeah. bit more toned down, isn't it? On the pizza theme, I really like the smell of basil. Yeah? I really like the smell of basil. Yeah. So maybe basil would be a good one. You, I think you've got to go for something that's a bit... After shavy florally, <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, after some that shave smells nice because it doesn't say it's got to be a strong smell, yeah. but it's there. And yeah, I suppose you you do get nasally accustomed, accustomed, <laughs> nasally accustomed <laughs> to yeah to smells, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna go with basil. I like the smell of basil. Okay, things like that, something like that, like freshly cooked grass. Yeah, like that sort of earthy green smell. Is it chlorophyll? That sort of smell. <laughs> Leafy. Yeah, like plant blood. Yeah, plant blood. <laughs> I want to smell of plant blood. <laughs> would that... Oh, no, maybe we're getting too deep. I was going to say, would that give anyone hay fever? Who was oh, new? maybe. But it's only a smell. It's only so... a smell. Yeah. Yes, I'm actually covered in basil all the time. What would you think would be the worst? Uh, apart from like, really obviously, like, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would be a bad thing to smell like? Um... I don't have like body odor and stuff. What's a like a, a relatively normal smell? Some people really like really... the smell of petrol, and I really don't. <laughs> so like diesely petrol <laughs> smells, I really don't like that. I know what mine would be. Go on. It would. Be, it, the worst thing it could possibly be for me would be like a cheese sauce. Yeah. Like a mac and cheese. Like a. I don't mind a, cheese. I like cheese. I like melted cheese. But if I, I, if my my wife is cooking like macaroni and cheese, it makes me get. No, that's really? not a comment on her cooking. <laughs> I just and cauliflower cheese, any of that sort of really creamy cheese. But make oh, I can't stand it. Really, it that's interesting. Thinking about it, this this smells horrible for me. Burning plastic. Yeah, that's that'd be horrible, nasty, wouldn't it? Anything like burning, burning flesh. <laughs> not that I've ever smelled that. <laughs> um. Yeah, but it depends on the, even when you say burning flesh. You, 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 when you think, smells yeah, like you think of like a hog roast or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Burning plastic's a bad one. Yeah. I'm going to go with that. I want to smell like puzzle, burnt basil. Rubber I don't want to smell like burnt rubber tire fires. Yeah. I don't want to smell like. Yeah. yeah, good. Good question. I like that. Let us know what your answers are in the discussion. What do you want to smell like? <laughs> 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 That feels really Alan Partridge. Let, <laughs> call in, let us know. Oh, I wish we had a live phone in. So yeah, that'd be well me cool. too. Me too. Be... <laughs> Maybe we should get a radio show rather than a podcast. <laughs> I think me and you having our own radio show would be really fun. We should try that. <laughs> if it there must be a is, local radio station. Problem is, it would be funny for me and you. But no. Yeah, but nobody listens to local radio. No, that's true. Just give us like the, I don't know, 
two a.m. to four a.m. slot. I'm up for that. I'm absolutely up. For... There must be local radio stations that were just like, yeah, go for it. Do what you want. <laughs> we could do a movie review show, but then just what's good? Play music as well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Shall we do some Netflix news? Yeah, let's crack on with the news of the week. I think we've got quite a bit this week, haven't we? We will start with a bit of a heads up. Okay. That Netflix has announced that they will be. They will be uh, um, transmitting. <laughs> you okay? Uh, yeah, I've just lost all words. <laughs> they will be transmitting a virtual showcase okay. to, to celebrate the best of Netflix's upcoming animation slate. Interesting. Uh, you can find it on September the twenty seventh at well five pm BST, which is twelve pm ET in the states. Uh, where? Uh, on Tudum. Tudum on the website. Yes. Uh, Tudum.com forward slash drop zero one. Uh, because that's what they are branding it. Drop zero one. Catchy. Okay. I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> it will be a 90 minute presentation. Nice. Which will include the premiere of the first three episodes of Castlevania Nocturne. Right. Which is the spin off to the Castlevania animated show. What, they're showing the first three episodes? Yep. Okay. Uh, and between each episode of that, Netflix will be showing surprise announcements and never before seen sneak peeks from other animated series that the fans uh, that our fans are most excited about. The presentation will include first looks at Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, Sonic Prime Season 3, Captain Laserhawk. Awesome. <laughs> the Blue Eyed Samurai, uh, a Masters of the Universe Revolution. Nice. Also sharp eagle-eyed uh, commenters have noticed that in the poster for drop zero one there is a capcom logo okay pretty obviously featured meaning uh people are now theorizing there's some sort of capcom ip that's going to have a show announced during this presentation street fighter is the only thing i can think with yeah, capcom it's, 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 there, there is other stuff but that's the only <laughs> it is really prominently displayed in the poster it's as just, well to be yeah it's right next it's to right the, in uh, the middle, mega drive right in the middle at the bottom <laughs> so yeah september the 27th i mean it's only a day before the full release of castlevania nocturne okay which arrives on september the 28th but i think that's the first time i can remember netflix using we've we've had loads of this sort of to dumb type yeah, stuff yeah. sneak peeks and all that sort of thing but to actually go here's three episodes of a of a show and we're gonna which we're, we're gonna put them yeah, there on the internet. the 90 minute presentation it's the sort of thing that sony do and microsoft do yeah. like they'll do like a showcase evening yeah. where they'll show you their new games so it's the same sort of idea yeah so yeah you can check that out like i say september the 27th just a couple of weeks away I feel like I'm going to cinema that night, but I will maybe okay. check it out before I go. <laughs> it's very organised of you. It's a secret screening that's I've just been announced. In more depressing Netflix news, okay, you well, let's talk about the uh, the ongoing strikes affecting Hollywood. Okay, and an interview from Netflix's chief financial officer Spencer Newman. Spencer Newman. Yeah. Who has said, well, he put it this way, he's offered absolutely zero support for the for the writers and actors currently on strike. Lovely. Well Basically done, saying that the strikes are bad for business. Oh, and, <laughs> and all Netflix is focused on is getting back to work. He says, I think that, and I'm really going to cut through it here, the main thing is that there's a lot of folks out of work and the business isn't moving forward. It's terrible for all those folks out there not working and it's not good for the business. That's what we're focused on. At the end of the day, to move the business forward and to have great storytelling and fresh stories for our subscribers, it's about the partnership with the writers, producers and directors and actors. We need to get back to work. That's what we're focused on. We're very committed to get back as quickly as possible in the meantime we are managing there is nothing there where he says we're talking to these people to understand what they're looking for how we can you know negotiate <laughs> it's or it's like that meme where the that meme where the point goes over that guy's head yeah it's yeah it is it's basically saying we want to get back to work but we're uh, not going to do anything we're going to wait you out yeah, essentially basically. is what i completely we know you're struggling 
I'll say that three times. We know you're struggling. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people out of work who are much worse off than the actors and the stri- the writers, I imagine. But it's oh, I don't, it's completely how to completely miss a point. Exactly, is it's ridiculous? What a ridiculous thing to say. We'll come later in the news to what I think what's going to be my favourite story of the week, and uh, I, we can play a sort of a little game with it because okay. there's there's a lot of ways in which uh, the the TV and movie business is trying to help raise funds for those people who are struggling. Okay. So in particular, a lot of the behind the scenes workers who, you know, live paycheck to paycheck. Yep. So we're going to talk in a bit about uh, an eBay auction. Oh, nice. That's coming up over the next week or so. And you will not believe some of the things you can bid Ooh, for. Oh, exciting. I'm excited. Let's <laughs> get to it. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a short while. Let's um, just tell this guy to fuck off. <laughs> Spencer New. Get out your Netflix castle. It's kind of missed the whole point. It's like, this is why we're striking. This is like, yeah. th- that attitude is exactly the reason why they're striking in the first place. Let's, before we get to some of that, let's go and talk a bit more about One Piece. I still haven't got to One Piece. No, yet. me neither. Yet. It's kind of next on my list. Yeah, with being away, I haven't got any, anything more. Which has obviously done done really well. For, for Netflix so far. We we spoke last week about it setting a new record, number one in the most number yeah. of countries around the world. Yeah, Netflix made up a record for it. Yet to be renewed <laughs> for a second season, but it's it's probably likely, I yes, think, I I think, think so. it's fair to say. The producers of the show have uh, been talking to Deadline yep. in a recent interview. Uh, that is Marty Edelstein and Becky Clements. They say they've already written the script, scripts for season two. Okay, cool. Uh, and I've been talking a bit about their future plans. They are hoping to do 12 seasons. Wow. They're not getting 12 seasons. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not happening. Uh, Adelstein said, we have hopes for 12 seasons. We have so much material. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's been going for so long. And there's so many comics and other... The yeah. animated show has been going for years and years. There are 1,000 chapters to the manga so far. Wow. Season one covers the first 90. 90? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you've got at least another 11 seasons there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Clement says, we're there are over a thousand chapters at this point in the manga. We have plans for how we would break it into multiple seasons. Even if we only did six seasons, we'd probably use up half the chapters of the manga. We could go on and on and on. We've had more thorough conversations about what to do with season two if we get the opportunity. And then less extensive conversations about where we would go from seasons three to six. Uh, The stories are driving us forward. The characters drive us forward. We know that these are the most important things to the fans. Aim high. (laughs) Yeah. Aim for 12. You're not getting 12. But aim for 12. Why not? If The Witcher can get this made, yeah, then maybe. It's like when you when you go into a negotiation and you're really highball. Yeah. And you're like, we want 12. You can have six. Deal. I want it. Yeah, six. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened there. <laughs> this is quite a big news story that's gone under the radar this week, I think. For a certain audience, I think this is a Definitely a big news story. I th- no, I, th- I think it's a big news story generally. I think this is the biggest net one of Netflix's biggest moves in the in terms of games. Yeah, 100%. And, and that is the news this week that the mobile version of Football Manager, the latest Football Manager release, Football Manager twenty twenty four, will be exclusive to Netflix games. That's crazy. It's like Football Manager is one of the biggest games in the yeah. world. Yeah. So, yeah, the it, the mobile version will be available exclusively through Netflix games via the Netflix mobile app. So, basically, you can't play it unless you have a Netflix subscription. Crazy. That's yeah. a big move. People will buy subscriptions just to play that game. That game's huge. Yes, yeah, so this is, yeah, this is the handheld version, basically. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'm sure it, it rides high every year on the, on the sort of mobile gaming charts. You start with a mobile gaming version and eventually you move on. Exactly. That's where this is going. Exactly. The studio director from Sports Interactive uh, said that this is the most complete version of this game we have ever produced. 
the vast majority of the team in Sports Interactive are working on Football Manager 24. The idea will be the most complete version of the game to date. Wow. Awesome. That's, that is crazy. Good good for Netflix. I mean, people that, will that's subscribe. Just, that's a game that's just got a baked in audience. Audience. Yeah. People have been playing. So I know people who have played Football Manager for 20 years. Yeah. Maybe more. And still play it big style now. And people will buy subscriptions for that. That's that's a good move. It's a big move for Netflix. Yeah, it is. It is. I wonder if we'll ever get numbers on games. Like how many downloads they've had, how many streams they play, how many people play it. If it does well, yes, we will immediately <laughs> get numbers. Yeah. That would be my guess. <laughs> yeah, true. We talked a couple of weeks about ago about the upcoming Toronto Film Festival. We did. That is now in in motion and news this week that netflix has put his hand in his pocket and acquired the directorial debut of anna kendrick oh wow okay uh, which is a movie called woman of the hour netflix has paid around 11 million dollars for the movie nice Uh, and what is it it is described as the first major sale of the toronto film festival Uh, uh Variety says that Netflix won the won the bid in a competitive situation. Wow! After the Bidding film, war. the film garnered multiple offers. Uh, the movie is based on a true story. Anna Kendrick plays a contestant on the dating game in 1978 America, who picks a potential date, who turns out to be a serial killer. Oh, okay. It's a true story. Yeah. Wow. Uh, of at least eight victims, but possibly over a hundred. It's quite, quite a large window. No, it is quite a large window. <laughs> uh, yeah, the killer is played by Daniel Zavato, uh, who posed as a photographer in Los Angeles to take pictures of his victims. Tony Hale is also in the cast. Interesting about this mm. is that Netflix have paid for this movie uh, to, to uh, distribute it after they cut the movie previously oh really so they they initially optioned it from a blacklist script all right uh, kendrick was on board to star at that point the director left she took on she took the directing role yeah and then netflix said well we're not we're not doing this now due to the cost cutting and they've ended up the uh waiting for somebody to make it and yeah exactly it yeah um interesting wow yeah so we'll wait to see when that turns up on Netflix. That is interesting. Uh, look, it's, Sounds good. it's Sounds material ready to go. It's, yeah, it's, it's had its, it's premiere, so... Uh, yeah, I guess if it's had its premiere, the strikes don't really affect it either. Exactly. So I expect to see that very soon, I would think. It's in the can. Okay, let's let's talk bids. Let's talk movie auctions. Oh, nice. So I'm excited. D- uh, I will... Don't click any further, because I will go okay. to the site and... and you, you can try and guess some of the uh, some of the things that are up for auction. Exciting. So yeah, uh, as I said earlier, so while the actors and writers strikes continue, we've got a, a load of organisations trying to offer support and and raise money for for those uh, less well off, as I say, sort of behind the scenes type roles. Uh, proceeds of the Union Solidarity Coalition's auction. <laughs> nice. We'll go to the Crew Healthcare Fund. Right. And my word, there's quite a few things, interesting things you can bid on currently on eBay. I wish I was rich. (laughs) Uh, How about... uh, Look, some of these are fairly, I guess, make make sense within the industry. So you can have a Zoom session on visual... Story Basics with Spike Yons and Lena Dunham. Wow. Okay. That is currently sitting at $5,100 with eight Okay. Left. That's a good price for aspiring writers. 20 minutes and 20 questions with uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Okay. Nine bids so far. How much? How much do you think? 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, presumably on a Zoom. Yeah. 20 questions. Yeah. $4,500. Oh, you're way off. $650. Oh, oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Natasha Leon. 
will yeah. help you solve the New York Times Sunday crosswords. <laughs> okay. That's kind of got 28 bids. Really? Yeah. That's going to be a bit higher then. Yeah. So, 1,400? 2,800. Oh, half off. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. The cast of Bob's Burgers will sing a song written just for you. 50 bids so far. That's going to be high. Bob's but, Burgers is huge. Yeah, and that's quite. A, that's a very unique. Yeah, it is. Prize thirteen thousand. Five thousand. Oh, really? So okay. Far. Wow. These have all got like eight, nine days left. Okay. John Lithgow. Oh yes. Will. <laughs> this is the one I'm bidding on, no matter what he's doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll paint a watercolor portrait of your dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have a dog. John Lithgow will paint a picture of your dog. Yes. Hollywood is weird, isn't it? <laughs> 3,200. Close. Four grand okay. currently. For an original Lithgow. That's, yeah, that's exactly. That's impressive. Bob Odenkirk and David Cross will join you for dinner. Oh, wow. 56 bids currently. They're going to have to do some travelling to come <laughs> over here. Um, ba- 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 50 bids. Yeah. Four thousand two hundred dollars. Seven grand so oh, far. Oh wow! Okay, I'd love to go to dinner with Bob Odenkirk, but he's a fascinating. Guy. We'll uh, we'll talk about Bob Odenkirk. We will indeed later this week, won't we? We will because our movie Girlfriend's Day. He stars. He does, yeah. and the love interest in Girlfriend's Day is the wife of Bob of David Cross. Is it? Yeah. Oh, good. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Lena Dunham will paint a mural in your home. Come to my house and paint <laughs> a mural. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Lena Durham? She was the star of Girls. Oh, yeah, I know she is. Um, no, thank you. $500. $5,000. Oh, wow, okay. Take a pottery class with Busy Phillips in New York City. Who's Busy Phillips? She was in Cougar Town and oh, right, okay. she's been in lots of sitcoms. How many bids? 17 $1,530. dollars 2500 Oh, okay. A Zoom meetup with Matt Bomer. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'd be up for that. 33 bids so far. $2,500. Okay, wow. I'm, I, I'm overestimating some of these. <laughs> 20 minutes, 20 questions. This time with Sarah Silverman. Oh, okay. How many bids? 17 bids. 17 bids. Currently at $3,000. $1,500. Oh, okay, I'm I am really that. highballing this. I thought that'd be higher. I thought that'd be higher too. Uh, Ron Livingston gives you relationship advice. (laughs) That's something I definitely don't need. (laughs) Only five bids so far on that one. Twenty-five dollars. (laughs) Seven (laughs) hundred (laughs) dollars. What a random thing. Uh, A Zoom session with the cast of New Girl. Oh, that's interesting because they've not been together for a long time. New Girl's been finished for ages. Twenty-eight bids. Twenty-eight bids. Currently at four thousand two hundred. Not bad. 3,200. Oh, okay. Closer. Just a couple more. Okay. Because a lot of these are just uh, assigned photos. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that sort of usual stuff. Uh, a fedora that was owned and is signed by Tom Waits. Oh, okay. How many bids? 48. But you bear in mind, before you bid on this, okay. you will have to pay $69 shipping. $69? <laughs> yeah. Where's it coming from? Nice. Um... Tom Waits' house, presumably. $1,200. Two and a half grand. Oh, wow. Finally. Unfortunately, we can't go for this because you've got to be based in Los Angeles. Right. Adam Scott will walk your dog for one hour. (laughs) Adam Scott will walk my dog. And then when he gets home, John Lithgow will paint it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, Double header. How many bids? 39. 39 bids. That's quite a lot of bids. 3,500. Good, three thousand and three thousand and fifty dollars oh, wow. so far. Some of them are going to go for a lot higher than that. Yeah, but there's there's eight to nine days left on a lot of them. So yeah. it's good that they're built. They're trying to raise funds for these people that are being affected, though, and not just ignoring them like the Netflix financial guy was. Oh, I'll give you one more. Go on. Uh, a weird Al Yankovic Hawaiian shirt signed by Daniel Radcliffe and weird Yal oh, Yankovic. Weird, weird Yal Yankovic. Yankovic. <laughs> signed by both of them. Yeah. How many bids? 28. 
I think this is high. I'm going six thousand two hundred. No, in there sixteen hundred. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought that'd yeah, be a Lost Boys there. screenplay side by the cast. Wow. Uh, a, the bear signed apron. Cool. By the cast. A Hulk Funko signed by Mark Ruffalo. That'd be worth a bit. Sixty-three dollars shipping. Sixty for a Funko. Yeah. Oh, funk off. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if there'll be more added to that, but we might keep an eye on that because yeah, there's some really where, fun where, ideas. It'll be interesting to go through what some of them went for as well. Yeah, yeah. And it finishes. Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. It's good that the industry are, are helping and working together. Let us know if you've uh, bid on any of that stuff. Yeah, definitely. If you want to buy us any of that stuff, I yeah, sure. take it. Sure. I would buy a dog for John Lithgow to paint it. <laughs> <laughs> you, we can get, uh, we can get, dude. We can get you a dog. If you need to borrow a dog, my mum and dad have got a dog. Yeah. But he's he's just black. He's boring. <laughs> okay. Next is, I think, maybe about every few years, it feels like Hammer Horror is relaunched. Yeah, it does. They they do tend to relaunch it every so often. Well, it's happening again because okay. <laughs> Hammer Horror are doing a new version. Of Jekyll and Hyde. Okay. And it's, it's a great story. It will be released, uh, a limited cinematic release in the UK on the 27th of October. Oh, that's quite soon. Just in time for Halloween. Hmm. And it will star Eddie Izzard. Oh, wow. That's an interesting piece of yeah. casting. He will play Nina Jekyll and Rachel Hyde. Okay, interesting. This, this is going to get a lot of people's yeah. uh, pants in a twist. Uh, Anything Eddie Izzard does, does do that. <laughs> do you, uh, yeah, there are not even a trailer yet, but a few sort of first look images. Also stars Simon Callow. I would have put money on Simon Callow not being alive. But <laughs> do you know what? Yeah, this is someone I've not thought about for, <laughs> for a very long time. Quite a few years. But um, yeah, 27th of October, limited cinematic release. And I'm sure it will follow onto streaming yeah, 100%. pretty soon. A streamer will pick that up. Yeah, I might check that out. Sounds fun. Do you like any? Do you like the Hammer Horror stuff? Yeah, they've gone back and have you, did when you they went to that at any point. What did they relaunch it with a few years ago? I feel like it was relaunched recently and it was good, and I can't remember what it was. But I did enjoy that film, whatever okay. that film <laughs> whatever was. that was, whatever that film was, I enjoyed it. I, in weird things that we talked about on this show and seem to have made happen in real life. Okay. A few weeks ago, one of our real talks was like, what t- what TV show should be adapted into a movie? Yes. And I talked about Murder, She Dealt. You like, did. <laughs> John Wick style Murder, She Wrote. You did. Well, that's not quite happening. But there is news this week that a movie version of Murder, She Wrote is in the works. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and why not? Why not? Uh, it is currently... In the works at Universal Studios, apparently. Right. Uh, with a bunch of producers behind it, including Amy Pascal. Uh, and, yeah, obviously no news on writers, directors, cast, because none of that's happening at the minute. But, yes, yeah, just the very fact that, that it is the happening. Murder, She Wrote movie might be happening. I feel like some people might get their backs up about that. Right. Really? Purists will be like, oh, you can't have a Jessica Fletcher that's not Angela Lansbury. <laughs> Bring her back. Oh, no, that's oh, no. against what we're... <laughs> She's also dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like there's some purists that might not like it, but... My only, my only my only thing about, like, th- this sort of adaptation is, like, what's the value in it having the Murder, She Wrote label on yes. it? It's like, if you've got a good script for a crime slash mystery movie... Yeah. Why is Murder She Wrote a big enough thing to have? Yeah, I get what you mean. You could just have a anybody give it that final push. solving crime, yeah. Stephen King made a career out of it. Sure, <laughs> so it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I just I, I'm interested in what like the metrics and the numbers are. Yeah. Like they've gone. Oh, well, I'm not sure we'd go for this if it if this script just dropped on our. T- maybe we wouldn't go for it, but yeah, yeah, we'll label it with Murder no, She wrote, wrote, and we're confident it's gonna. You've got an audience. There, have you? I, I mean, it's so. always on TV. It's still, like a, isn't it's it? got a cool Daytime. following, hasn't it? Yeah. I feel like your wife would be well into it. She like murder. She wrote. She did like murder. Yeah. She wrote. But I don't know if she'd be interested in this because of because she's a purist. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
That's what I mean. Yeah. You've got an audience, but have you got a... Are, are, they gonna, are, are the they audience gonna, too loyal to yeah, the Yeah, are they going to go with the go with the movie? Mm. I'm not sure. Well, okay. Yeah. Interesting. We'll uh, we'll follow that as it develops, if it develops. We definitely will. <laughs> I'll give you an interesting story. Go for it. Which uh, is about a movie I've not... I don't know if you went to see this. I've not seen this. The most recent Mission Impossible movie. I didn't go to see it. No, well, you're not the only one because it, it pretty much disappointed, really, at the box office. It was too long. People don't want to watch long movies. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like part one as well, isn't it? Yep. It ended up having quite the budget because it was delayed at least twice by COVID. Um, you know, it already had a globe trotting production schedule. Tom Cruise is it's a Tom Cruise movie. Of course it does. The budget ballooned to $291 million. Wow. And its box office was a bit disappointing. However, news this week that this movie has become profitable. Right. And I don't think you'd guess why. It's become profitable because Paramount has received $71 million from a Swiss insurance company, which they claimed due to production interruptions on the filming of the movie. Okay. So they received an initial payment of five and a half million, but then filed a lawsuit against the insurance company and settled for seventy one million. Uh, so yeah, they claimed insurance due to interruptions on the production caused by COVID nineteen. So they were insured against things stopping them from Basically, working. Basically, yeah. And like insurance companies yeah. paid out. Yeah. Wow. And that's made this movie profitable. I mean, that's a big Only asterisk just, yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, that is a big asterisk. Yeah. That's mental. That's absolutely These movie crazy. studios have got good lawyers, man. They really have, haven't they? <laughs> Tom Cruise was really hot on the uh, COVID-19 stuff as well, wasn't yeah. he? Remember he had that row with all the... He was one of the first ones to go back as yeah, well. Yeah, he was. And he, had, he was like getting angry with people for not following the rules yeah. and stuff, wasn't he? I remember that coming out. Really a lot, lot of personal investment in that franchise. Yeah. That's the only thing he works in now. Final piece of news. If you happen to be in the... Manchester area in October, then you might want to search out the Halloween film festival uh, or film program being held at the Courtplex on Red Bank in Manchester. Okay. Uh, their October lineup is called Stab. No, oh, really? Yeah, a series of uh, spooky films every weekend through October. Uh, I will give you the rundown because it's how if I think if we were a bit closer, you'd be there every weekend. Okay. So, I'm still considering it. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So Sunday, the first of October, twelve thirty p.m. A screamathon. Nice. All the, all the screen movies. All of them. Yeah. Sweet. Back to back to back. I'm back up for that. To back to back. It's a long time sitting in the cinema though. <laughs> the weekend after Saturday, the seventh of October, Beetlejuice on the big screen. Nice. Uh, I'd follow, go to that. Followed by Threads, which is the really depressing nuclear war thing oh, from yeah, the yeah. 80s or 70s. Uh, 8th of October, Pi. I think I've seen that way back in the day. So the name's familiar. Uh, 11th of October, uh, a, quiz, a spooky quiz show. Ooh. Saturday, the 14th of October, uh, The Living Dead. Nice. Uh, 21st of October, Ginger Snaps. Oh, cool. Great film. And Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I've never seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space. What I a double like feature. Uh, 27th of October, Night Breathe and Skinnamarink. Never heard of either of them. I think I've heard of Skinnamarink. I think we might have talked about it on here. Okay. 28th of October, Suspiria. Nice. And at 10pm, a surprise zombie all-nighter. A surprise zombie all-nighter? Yeah. So just like zombie movies all night? Yes. 29th of October... The Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> okay. It's a Halloween film. Yeah. And then finally, 31st of October, the big day itself, uh, half past seven, Monster Squad, half past ten, an American werewolf in London. That's cool. Good lineup. Great lineup. There's some films there I would love to see on the big screen. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah if, you're in, if you're in or around Manchester, get yourself up there. Get some tickets and get into the cinemas. That's cool. I like that. Awesome. All the news done? That's all the news. Excellent. That was a lot of news. Well done. Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? 
I've watched a couple of things. Go on. I've started the, I think it's season six on Netflix, Rick and Morty. Yes, I'm, I need to get onto that. I've not finished that. Started that. Yes, yeah, good. I, I mean, I can't really contribute much more to it's it. Rick and Morty. It's, yeah. it, you, we know what it is by this point. Yeah. It's good. It's nice when it's back. Makes yep. me laugh. Uh, and then show. today I have watched episode one of Netflix's new sports documentary, The Wrestlers. Oh, uh, that's my plan after you've gone tonight. I'm gonna start okay. Uh, I, I went in, I pressed play and I was like, oh, I'm not really up for this, but I feel like, a, a, two, well, two things. As we've mentioned before, a bit of a lapsed wrestling fan. Yeah. I, 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 it's something I felt I like would have been a lot more interested in a few years ago, but I'll give it a go. Agreed. And I also thought, I've got an hour to spare. Let's it's try something it. to talk about on the podcast <laughs> later. And do you know what? By the end of the episode, I was drawn in. Really? I was drawn into the standard Netflix template. Yeah. And look, this is a grimy setting. Yeah. With the the sort of usual cast of characters you've seen before. If you've watched any wrestling documentary, you've got the up and comers. You've got the guys on the way, that guys and girls on their way down. Yeah. Um. What I think finally won me over towards the end, though, is it's all pretty standard, probably for the first two thirds of the first episode. But when the, but the the final third of the episode is something I've not, I've genuinely not really seen before in a wrestling documentary, and that's at the point where the we follow them doing a live TV show. Okay. And your you, the action cuts between seeing what's happening in the ring, and you're then you're actually sat at Gorilla, and they're behind the scenes, and they're talking to the referee. Interesting. Directly, you, you never see that. No. That's always been really hidden yeah. in, in the wrestling world. And, and we're literally taking through, yeah. No, you've definitely the countdown. my interest you've got there. Telling them how long they've got left, directing the action. Um, mm. And I was like, yeah, we've not seen that before. No, that's interesting. That's, you've piqued my interest there. Yeah. I think the thing with me and you, as we claim to be lapsed wrestling fans, we always were more interested in the backstage politics of wrestling than the actual that's what's, what's going on in the ring. It's much yeah. more interesting. So that's that's kind of piqued my interest there. So yeah, it was a proper sort of looking into the mechanics of how you, how put, you put a, a TV together. show together and a broadcast. It's Ohio it. Valley Wrestling, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. That's my plan after you've gone to. Okay, I think you'll like it. Uh, yeah, I've only watched the first episode, so I think it's seven or eight. Oh really? Yeah. There's loads. There's yeah. quite many. Okay, cool. Anything else? I think that's it for me. Okay, I've How watched a couple of things. I've kept up with Only Murders in the Building. Oh yeah, I've, season three I've of that is great. That, yeah. Talking to people I thought were dead. There's a cameo in the latest episode. Mel Brooks is in it. Oh, really? He's 98, I Brilliant. think. He's only, it's like kind of video call with yeah. um, Martin Short's character. Yeah. I honestly thought Mel Brooks was <laughs> long dead. I did not know he was still alive. I was like, fuck me, that's Mel Brooks. Like, but it's been brilliant so far. I've got no clue who the murderer is. Good. No idea. It's only There's only a few left now as well. So it's exciting to find out. And then I did a couple of films while we were away. Probably shouldn't have, but these are... Not on any streaming service yet, yeah. shall we say. Um, I watched The Meg 2, yeah, which is a sequel to The Meg, sure. obviously. They've stolen so much from so many B-movies oh, God. that it just worked for me. It just, it just worked for me. I didn't mind The Meg. I, I, I didn't. I thought, I thought The Meg was great. I think I give The Meg 9 out of 10 when it came out. Um, but yeah, it's just fun. It's just it's silly. It's so stupid. Yeah. At one point, it does a free dive at 25,000 feet of course. with no equipment. Of course. <laughs> apparently if you fill your sinuses up with water the pressure won't affect you right that's all you need to do that's what <laughs> those sure. people on that submarine should have done not sure the science checks out. <laughs> uh, there's a giant octopus in this one so it, at one point there's a mega shark fighting a giant octopus brilliant they've stolen so much but it's it just it works with a budget and I really enjoyed it I had a lot of fun with it my parents actually really enjoyed it as well nice uh, and then I watched The Strays is that the sweary dogs the sweary dogs yeah um, yeah it's just sweary dogs <laughs> it's not that great to be honest it's uh Standard. It's, it's, it, literally, that's the gimmick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch Good Boys, which was the square, sweary kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, but yeah. with dogs. Yeah. It's exactly the same story. Um, and, yeah. Okay, fine. It was fine. If you like that sort of bro-y humour, yeah. it's Will Ferrell, isn't it? And all, yeah. all of his mates. I, it wasn't for me, I don't think. Okay, fine. Yeah, but that is all I've watched this week as well. Very different from Stray, the game we talked about last week. Hundred <laughs> percent, very, very different. <laughs> That's the uh, cool cats, as opposed to sweary dogs. So that's 
it. That's all I've watched. We haven't got a real tour because we mentioned earlier. So do you want me to do my game quickly? Yeah, let's have a game. Let's have a game. What game are we playing? It's the same one we've played the last few times when I've done a game, whereas I give you a cast list. Oh, nice. Yes. And you have to guess the film. As we, I've got five members of a cast and you have to tell me the film. Fantastic. So the quicker you can get it, the better. All right, you ready? Sure. Number one. The first cast member I'm going to give you is Robert Prosky. Okay. Know him? No. Okay. Cast member number two, Matthew Lawrence. Okay. Know him? No. He's one of the Lawrence brothers. There was three of them. <laughs> like, as in like Joey Lawrence. Joey Lawrence, okay, Matthew Lawrence, fine. and I think there was another one. Uh, do you want to have a guess? Yeah, uh, no. Number three, Pierce Brosnan. Okay. Do you want to have a guess? Yes. Go on. Mrs. Doubtfire. Correct. Well done. <laughs> Uh, do you want to know who the other two members of the cast I had written down were? I think you must be going with Sally Field yep. and Robin Williams. Correct. Well done. You did that in three. I'm impressed. I'll take that. I, could, I wouldn't have guessed Mrs. Doubtfire, but when, when she said Pierce Brosnan, I was like, no, I think he was a Lawrence. That kid, the kid. Yeah, he was. The boy kid. The boy kid was yeah. one of the Lawrences. They all had the same hair, didn't they? Yeah. They had a, they had a sick, one of them still got a sitcom now with um, Clarissa Explains yeah. It All. No, yeah. girl. no, the yeah. teenage witch one. That's the same girl. Is it the same yeah. girl? Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember her name. Nor, nor can I. Yeah, um, but yeah, they, they were three of them. They were quite famous at that time. Right, next one. You ready? Yes. Jared Rushton. Okay. Any ideas? No. Nope. John Lovitz. I know who he is. You do know who he is. <laughs> well, I could be John Lovitz. What? I can think of a couple of John Lovett's movies, but which... What, Remember, why, he's quite far down in this cast. Why would you choose it? I like you trying to get into my head. Yeah. Are you thinking that would be my sort of movie? There's one... There's a movie that springs to mind that John Lovett's has a... Slightly more than a cameo in. Go on. So I'm tempted to guess. Yeah, can I have a guess? You've got nothing to lose. Let's go for it. The Wedding Singer. No. No. Okay, Next cast on. member is John Hurd. Okay. No, I'm not sure. No? Right. Elizabeth Perkins. Well, <laughs> so... Elizabeth Perkins. This one's tough. This one is tough, to be fair. Can I guess? Yep. The Flintstones. No. Oh. Do you want the fifth one? Yeah. Tom Hanks. It's big. It's big. John Lovitz in big. John Lovitz is in big. Oh. <laughs> Right, next one. Are you ready? Yeah. The fifth member of the cast of this one is The Rock. Okay. Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Can I get a guess? Yeah. I can't remember what the film's called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it could be one of two. I'm thinking if he's the fifth, if he's the lowest down cast member. Is it something early in his career or is it a cameo that he's done? Yeah. I'm thinking, I tell you the movie I'm thinking, I'm thinking of, I can't remember what it's called. Do you know who was in the sequel to Get Shorty? Yes. That's that. not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was that called? Don't know. No, me either. <laughs> Carry on. Jack Loudon. Okay. I, can't, I only kind of know who that is. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not 100% sure. Is he a British up and comer? He's British. Okay. Do you want a clue? Yeah, if you it's want. A British movie. The Rock's in a British movie. The next one? Yeah, go on. Vince Vaughn. Oh, it's uh, Fighting With My Family. It is, correct. Stephen well Merchant movie. Yes. Do you want to know who the next two were? It would be Nick Frost. No, I didn't no, put Nick, didn't Frost. Nick Frost. I didn't go Nick Frost. It would be... Obviously, it would be Flopo. Flopo's the number one. Who else was in it? Lena Hede. Oh, yeah, she was mum, wasn't she? She was she? the mum, yeah. Right, this one I think is quite tough. Okay. To Jerry P. Henson. Okay. Know her? Yes. You do know her. Malahashala Hali. I don't yes. know if that's how you say his name. Know him? Yeah, you want to have a guess? No. Tilda Swinton. Okay. I've got... Is it The Harder They Fall? No. Okay. Carry on. Kate Blanchett. Don't feel like this is something I would have seen. Mm, it's like it was quite a big film at the time when it came out. I'm sure it was. 
I don't know if you would have seen it or not. I think you will have. I feel like I've not seen many Kate Blanchett films. <laughs> I'd that's be surprised my, if you've not seen that's it. That's my gut feeling. If you've not seen it, you should watch it. Go on. Uh, the fifth one? Yeah. Brad Pitt. Is it Benjamin Button? It is The Curious <sighs> Case of Benjamin Button. I have seen it once. Yeah, I've yeah. only seen it once as well, but it's all right. Yeah. Right, ready? Last one. Yeah. Jonathan Lipnicki. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Remember him? Yeah, so I, I can instantly think of two movies he was in. Go on. <laughs> Do you want to have a guess at one? Uh, and I'm not sure you're going to tell me it's Stuart Little. Well, he wouldn't be the fifth member of the cast of Stuart Little. <laughs> no, either, surely he? not. Is it Jerry Maguire? It's Jerry Maguire. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you'd know who he was. I knew if you knew who he was. Yeah, get it. exactly. But I didn't know if you'd know yeah. who he was. Do you want to say the other four people in that cast? Oh, gosh. Uh, gosh. But, <laughs> is it Bonnie Hunt again? No. Oh, I I she is in she... it, but I left yeah, her Yeah, I thought she was. I thought, I thought you were going on a Bonnie Hunt thing. She's <laughs> always in there. So four more. Oh, I haven't seen that for years. So it's got to be Renny Zellberger. Nope. No, she's in it, but I didn't you put didn't her down. Put her There's some it. big names in this list. Wow. Did you put Jerry O'Connell? Jerry O'Connell. Nice. nice. He was third. Uh, third. Third. Uh, Cooper Gooding Jr. Yeah. Tom Cruise. Yeah. So you're just missing the fourth. Yeah, it's going to be one rando, isn't there? Yeah. Don't know. Regina King. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I thought if I went Zellweger, there's a big cast in that film. So I needed to balance yeah. it a bit more. Uh, Joe Maguire was one of my answers the other day, and uh, we've been playing a game in the Discord, the sort of grid. Oh, yeah, yeah. The crossover grid. I'm terrible at that. It's really it's, it's more really, difficult when, than you really think is. it is. So you get three names across the top, yeah. and three names or scenarios down the or side. Or a genre. Or a genre. You or it could be fill in the grid. directed by or box office over 200 million yeah. or something like that. And you have to. Yeah, you have to map the grid. It's one of the games we play in the Discord. I can't do it. I've got nine. I've got nine out of nine once. I, I, think I can barely game for a week. <laughs> I'm so, I really Wait, struggle with it. It just shows me that I have a bad memory. Of I, I did I get Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire because one of them was uh, romance. Yeah, and Tom Cruise was along the top, so I did go for that. Good thinking. But they also to get a higher score in it. You're supposed to go with a less obvious answer. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought you just had to get answers. Well, you can. But, but then to get a higher get a score, score is to oh, okay. use, like use, yeah, use examples that less people have used. Okay. So. And maybe I'll try it again, but I find it really difficult. It is tricky. It is tricky. Yeah. Right. Link's think, in the Discord. Go and check it out. Yeah, it is. Come and join the Discord. Um, The Discord link will be in the show notes. I think we've done a wave. We need to talk about... Well, we didn't talk about last week's film. Should we do that briefly? Yeah, we can do. Very briefly. Uh, last week, we watched a movie called... Spaced Out. Spaced Out. <laughs> Which is a 70s British porn movie. Sex romp. Sex romp. Softcore oh, porn. Oh, sure. It was bad. It was dreadful. It was... Re- it was... There was no... It was not fun. It wasn't even retro fun. It was just... It's just... No. It's dated terribly and let's never speak of it. The thing about Spaced Out is that nobody was ever supposed to watch it. No. And it somehow has managed to find itself on Netflix. That's the biggest mystery. Yes. Go and listen to our episode. Yes. I haven't heard it yet, but I will go and listen to it. You were there? No, I know. Can you hear the owl? That's a massive hoot. There's an owl outside. Going on. Wow. Who knew? And um, this week, what are we watching this week? Why is it on the shoulder of that guy in a cape? <laughs> Why is, it Why in is your he standing at the window? That's really loud. Yeah. That's cool. Got an owl on the show. <laughs> What are we watching this week? Uh, this week we're watching Girlfriend's Day. Yes, starring Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, you mentioned earlier. And, and also has, has a, a good few cameos in it. Yeah, there's quite a few people in this. It's the, definitely the shortest movie we've ever done on the show. Is it? One hour and five minutes. Okay. But yeah, I think it's by far the shortest. Okay. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll come. We're, what we're going to try and do is an episode the same length as the film. Maybe. But I don't think we'll <laughs> achieve that. So yeah, come and let us uh, talk to you about Girlfriend's Day on Thursday. And I don't know why I've just <laughs> ended that in such a downbeat way. I yeah, apologise. You yeah, kind of just, yeah, just closed us off. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. Come on back on Thursday and listen to us talk about Girlfriend's Day. Cheers. Bye.